us right here, right now on GMFB. Big show, lots of guests, lots of headlines. Peter Schrager is here. He talked to the head coach of the Giants, Joe Judge. We've got him on Daniel Jones. That's coming up. Nate Burleson, I'm sure happy to welcome back Kyle Brandt. Kyle, did they send your background to Australia in the full move that you're doing, or are you actually back stateside? I'm actually back in the United States of America. I was in Australia for six weeks, and guys, I can finally announce it. I was doing the Real World Road Rules Challenge. I destroyed Johnny Bananas. And then I did Survivor and wiped the floor with Boston <laughs> Rob. But I'm back. Let's change things up and talk some Aaron Rodgers today, Adams. What do you say? A lot has changed. We are going to talk about Aaron. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. We need your thoughts. Nothing has changed. I'm rocking the Bears. Good juju for Justin Fields. We'll get to all of that right here on the show. We'll talk family reunions. Irv Smith Jr. is joining us. We've got Jordan Poyer on the show. NFL first, all right here, right now. But let's talk deadlines. One of them is today. It's time for Lee Block. Lee Block. Lee Block. Lee Block. Yeah, Allen Robinson, one of those guys. Uh, deadline day for the players who got the franchise tag. They've got until 4 p.m. today to sign something long-term, extension style. According to our very own Ian Rappaport, Chris Godwin and the Buccaneers, they are not expected to get a deal done under the wire. Ian added that Godwin's a huge part of the Bucks' plans. They're going to continue to work into next offseason to get the extension done. Sort of similar to what they did to friend of the show, a guy who visited us earlier this week, Shaq Barrett. He signed his deal back in March. Speaking of Barrett, Kyle, you missed it. He was on with us Tuesday. Take a listen to him talking about their road to repeat in 2021. There's a lot of hard work and it's a target on your back after you win that Super Bowl. Everybody know, like, yeah, we're going to beat them. That's going to let us know where our season going to be at. So we most definitely going to put the groundwork in. We're not going to start relaxing. We know that with the coaches we have, they won't let us relax anyway. But we, we know the leaders on the team going to help us to uh, maintain a steady course throughout the whole year and try to build on what we had last year because the second half of the year, we did turn it on. And if we could do that throughout all 17 games, we'd be in a great position. I like what he said, Nate. We also know Bruce Arian said recently that, you know, it's his job to make sure that they continue to be hungry, to be the hunters, not the hunted. But it's a fun conversation to have here in the NFC. Is Tom Brady at his age going to just roll through the NFC? There's questions with the other teams. Is there a team that you see that could be a challenger to Tampa Bay? I believe that Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks they are the top challengers to Tampa. And, and people yep. at home might be sitting back saying, Nate, well, how could that be? Russell Wilson last year started off hot, and then towards the end of the season, he was throwing balls to defensive, uncharacteristic interceptions. Towards the end of the year, the, the offense lost his rhythm. They couldn't protect him. He was complaining about his offensive line. We were talking about Russell Wilson possibly being traded. That's all washed under the bridge right now. They improved on every side of the ball. You know, you look at special team, they are always decent. Defensively, they got better. Offensively, they're going to fix their uh, offensive line issues. And then Russell Wilson in that passing game, like we're watching right now, we are just seeing the beginning of the Russell Wilson DK Metcalf era. So I truly do believe you got to have a team that can do exactly what the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can do and have a quarterback that when in trouble can improvise. There's no better team to name than the Seattle Seahawks. And I also love the fact that Chris Carson re-signed with the Seahawks, who was really one of the most underappreciated running backs in the business. Over the last few years, top five statistically when it comes to putting up yards on the ground. So for me, it has to be Russell Wilson. I, I have to look at a team that's going to be in the playoffs. I can't say, oh, well, let's, let's shake the dice and hope that one of these NFC teams find themselves and they get into the playoffs. No. Russell Wilson has been in the playoffs eight out of the last nine years. So we know one thing for sure, they will be there. Two things for certain, if they fix their problems on offense, then they will be a competition for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Nate, that's a very interesting choice. I don't think a lot of people at home will agree with it, but I like it. Am I talking about the Seahawks or your hair? Maybe both. I'll leave you guessing. But guys, who's <laughs> the biggest threat to the Buccaneers? Roll the tape. Just roll the tape. Here we go. We're rolling tape. We're going to Lambeau Field. Oh, hark. What do my eyes see? It's third and goal. Aaron Rodgers' final snap as a Packer? Should he run it? Should he run it? No, he doesn't run it. That's okay. We got fourth and goal. We got the MVP. We're going to punch this thing in. We're going to go to the Super Bowl. We're going to finally get... Nope. Matt LaFleur, perhaps in his haste to get to the Flying Coach podcast, decides to kick it 
Here comes Mason Crosby. And look at the thrilled, socially distanced fans in Lambeau Field just going crazy for that field goal. Guys, the choice is the Packers because they made the wrong choice there. They've lived it down ever since. In the meantime, they've drafted for the secondary, which is a direct response to that game. They lost their center. They replaced their center. And listen, the elephant in the room here. This all comes down to one ukulele playing, Miles Teller broing, Jeopardy hosting, complicated fella. If he goes back to that tundra, I don't see how it's not the Packers. I really don't. They had him. They had the Mighty Bucks dead to rights, and they decided to Crosby him. I love the Seahawks, but they, they show up every time in this playoffs and go home. Peter, I'd be fascinated to hear who's a better fit than an Aaron Rodgers-led Packers team to take out the Bucks. What say you, flying coach? <laughs> yeah, flying coach. Nobody is. You're right. If Rodgers is under center uh, in a normal offseason, I would say, yeah, the Packers are going to have a good chance to come back from this thing. But Aaron Rodgers hasn't thrown a football to any of his Packers teammates since that game, since that third and nine when it was an incomplete to Devontae Adams. Even if Rodgers shows up, I'm not so sure he just picks it up and they're just ready to go. There's other teams that have been working on a game plan, working on practice, and have been able to do things over these past few months to start building for 2021. Rodgers has been on the ukulele. He wasn't even at the Bucks game last night, so I don't know where he was last evening. But if it hasn't been on the golf links or with the uh, friends out there in Hawaii, we're in the Jeopardy studios. I, I don't know if I could say, hey, he shows up first day of training camp and everything is just fine. We'll see. If he does, of course they're in the conversation. But I'll give you a team I'm going to put in the conversation that might be a quarterback away from being there last year. How about the Los Angeles Rams? I know. Everyone's rolling their eyes saying, here we go. Rager with the Rams talk again. I, I just think that they're going to be very good this year. I think. Matt Stafford is a significant upgrade from what they had at a quarterback position the last few years. And that might be a slight at Jared Goff. It might not be. That's coming from me. I just think Stafford with 11 years in the league and doing what he did having near MVP campaigns with the Detroit Lions, I think you put him with this Rams team. You put him with McVay and here we go. And it's not just those guys. Raheem Morris comes on as a defensive coordinator. Raheem Morris, famous for getting the best out of the best players. What does that mean? Well, he showed up there in Atlanta, was on the defensive side, was the assistant head coach. They said, hey, we need you to be the wide receivers coach. And he became Julio Jones' head coach. And Julio Jones, who was already the best receiver in football, got even better. He elevates everyone of the stars' best game. So you put him on defense. Jalen Ramsey, I can see him getting better under Raheem Morris's watchful eye. Aaron Donald can get even better. Then you go right down the list from all those skill position players. And then the head coach. You mentioned it, Kyle. I've been doing this podcast with McVay. We do it every week. We talk all day. I, I, he's just, he can't go on vacation and just relax. Like, he might be like every coach. I don't know. But it is all about Rams football. Every moment of his life, he is so invested on 2021 and building the game plan, both offensively and defensively, to ensure that this thing doesn't fall apart and to ensure that Matt Stafford has success. So I'm going to say the Rams, and that might be biased, but I can only tell you what I know and what I feel. We can also throw the Saints out there. They've got questions, of course, with Jameis Winston. Washington is interesting. Let's not forget they gave the Bucks a really hard time, harder time than the Chiefs gave him last year. And that was with Tyler Heineke under center. Who knows what happens with Ryan Fitzpatrick, if he can take a step up uh, or just add some better quarterback play. Uh, I'm curious, Kyle, do you feel like in this segment, you're the expert here on a scale of like a Kay Adams workout of like dancing for an hour and your workouts that are uh, really aggressive. How much heavy lifting was done in this segment as far as how confident we are Tom Brady's going back to the Super Bowl? <laughs> That's a good question. Peter was desperately looking for a foothold on the, yeah, Rogers might not be able to pick it back up. You don't know. And Peter, I respect it. I've been there. I've done that. Uh, and you know what? Speaking of heavy lifting, guys, I have to share one thing. I was so excited to come back to the United States and soak up this American sunshine. Look at what happened yesterday. Look at my arm. Look at the two-tone I got working there. I have a terrible, terrible farmer stand. I don't even know if you can say farmer stand anymore, but that's what we used to call it. This is a disaster right here. I'm gonna have this for life. This is my tattoo. So the heavy lifting is me trying to cover this up. This looks awful. What am I gonna do? Yeah, six weeks back, and Kyle, you have found a way to show your bicep in the first segment. Very cool. It was, yeah. it, I know. It was the first time. <laughs> I did it, buddy. Hey, Peter, have you been working with I, Sean uh, McVay? Hey, God. Are you guys tight? <laughs> Tell me, do you guys hey. have a good relationship? Hey, by the way, do you see my arms, guys? Peter. Yeah, no, we get it, Kyle. You got a tan. We get it. Peter, I'll... I'll 
Peter, I hey guys, would say I got a ten too. Of the seven o'clock hour. <laughs> hey! I owe you ten bucks. I'm Venmoing you right now, Peter. I have the second segment for him to bring up his biceps. It kind of looks like a Polish flag, though, so I'm here for it, Kyle. We do have so many things to get to. We'll talk Aaron Rodgers. We got to get Kyle's opinion on no news being news. We're sitting here less than two weeks away from training camp. We do have Earth Smith uh, Jr. on the show. We have Jordan Poyer joining us. All your headlines. And we do have some troubling headlines out of Seattle that happened yesterday. If you haven't seen. Them. We'll get you all caught up to speed. Right here is a story that we are tracking, and Ian Rappaport is with us now with the latest. A serious situation has developed surrounding free agent cornerback Richard Sherman, who was booked and charged with four different charges by Redmond, Washington police yesterday. According to the police, the charges for Sherman are burglary, resisting arrest, uh, charges involving the damaging of a door for his in-laws' house, and then burglary, domestic violence. Now, no one was injured. There was no assault on anyone. But that is the charge because allegedly, according to the Redmond Washington police, Sherman tried to break into his in-law's house. It started, according to police, with a single car accident. Sherman then fled, tried to break into his in-law's house. He was not able to do it. Police were called. He resisted arrest, according to police. A canine was involved. And at that point, Sherman was subdued taken to jail, and then held without bail until a bail can be set, which is expected to happen today. Sherman, by the way, is also being investigated for an alleged hit and run that began this entire incident. And obviously, as more details emerge, we'll bring them to you. Also worth noticing, noting that Richard Sherman's wife uh, said no one was injured and that he is a good person, and this is not his character. Appreciate the update on that. Ian Rappaport, a story that we are following all day long here on NFL Network. We have a big show. The gang's back together fully here on this Thursday. Throwdown Thursday on the way. But after this, 